For many years now, Russ and Craig have had many wide-ranging conversations with folks from all over the gaming world. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the last chapter. Hey, welcome back to Duncan. Uh, we are here, of course, actually, with uh, one of our founder friends, and that's Rafe. Rafe, how you doing? Hey, Rafe. hey guys. Hey, it's great to see you back at Dunks. Great to hey. have you back at Dunkin' Donuts. I'm enjoying what, what a nice... What Rafe? What eating? Right now, I am eating one of those new Dunkin' Holiday Stars. Ooh. Have you had one of those? So it's it's a glazed donut with the green frosting on it, and it's got these like little white confectionery things. And I, I don't know what it is, but the frosting tastes better than normal frosting. The confectionery sugar thingies are just like just crunchy enough, and the inside is like Bavarian cream. You know what fascinates me about those? I'm eating the same thing right now, Rafe. And what fascinates <laughs> me about these is how do they get them in the star shape? I didn't even think about that. Seriously, they're because I used to work at a donut shop, and I know how yeast donuts work. And I'm trying to figure out: you drop a yeast donut into a fry later, and you fry it. How do they keep it in its star shape when you drop it into the fry later? I don't get it. Hmm. Those yeah. are amazing donuts, aren't they? They are. Yeah. That's not good for me and you and my fitness pal, though, is no, it? No, no, it's not. <laughs> That's a lot of treadmills. Yeah, well, no. Oh, yeah, especially if you're using Russ's uh, new program. My fitness pal, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Russ and I are friends on that. We are, yes. Instead you know of what, Facebook, we're my fitness pal friends. You know what my fitness pal keeps telling me about you? Yeah, I haven't logged in. It says, Rafe has not entered anything in over a week. You might want to remind him and give him some encouragement. <laughs> I got to get better at that, actually. Um, so consider this a, a public reminder. Behind that. That's a whole other TLC. All right. <laughs> All right. So thanks for having me back on. And I actually approached, uh, you guys approached me, of course, with uh, coming on for the um, holiday uh, year-end predictions. Right. But I was happy to, I, 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 I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am like, I'm like petrified over this topic. Why are you petrified? Don't be scared. I'm like scared. You're in you're a like, safe place, Ray. Right? You're the Hollywood Minute guy. You talk about, you just like let things out. Why are you scared? I might cry a little bit or oh, something. Oh, don't cry. So I, so I came I came to Russ and Craig, and uh, I've been having gamer burnout. Like oh. serious, Alcoholics Anonymous level gamer burnout. And uh, I said, hey, I've got this idea for a segment. What do you guys think? And they're like, yeah, man, that sounds, that sounds really good. So here's what's. I'm going to tell you. Here's the format. I'm going to tell you what's happening. I'm going to give you my definition of what gamer burnout is, and then Russ and Craig will chime in. Yep. And then I have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine observations about myself, which kind of scare me. Wow. Wow. That's and a lot. Um, and then uh, Russ and Craig will chime in there, mm -hmm. and then we'll just kind of ruminate about what it all means. Oh, and I and then how I'm on my way to recovery. Okay. Oh, good. So. Well, at what, least there's that. Yeah, happy ending. Yes. That's good. I do, I do feel that I'm on my way to recovery. But what I realized is that I've been miniature gaming and video gaming for 18 years. And, and that's a long part of, uh, of my life. And so it's always, 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 always fed me in a creative manner or it's calmed me down if I'm ever anxious or nervous. Like I could have the worst day at work or be super anxious about a court case or something. I could sit down on my hobby table and boom. It's like Xanax, totally calms me down. Yeah. Or it nurtures me in some way, feeds my soul. Yeah. I've yeah, made I life. Know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've made lifelong friends from it as well. I mean, there's you, um, there's Dave Farr, there's Matt Alex, there's Steno, there's Ian. I mean, so many like lifelong friends. I mean, how many friends do we have that we meet at work and then they move away or whatever? Like these are these are like real lifelong friends. And then my new friends through the D6 generation, like Angelo and Doc and Greg. And uh, Rodney and all my new friends. Um, and then recently over the past, uh, maybe it's eight months. Maybe it's even been a year. I'm not sure. But uh, for a really long time, I've been so bummed out because uh, miniature gaming and board gaming and video gaming has not fed me at all. Uh -huh. Has not made me whole. And, and actually, I've even gotten angry. Angry about it. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think how Craig... Does that, how does that make you feel? Why do you feel angry? Oh my god! It makes me feel nervous, all right, and scared because this is something it's that I've done. Why. What's that? I think it's clear why that would make you nervous, nervous. or upset. Right. Yeah, I mean, something that has been providing uh, uh, comfort for you is suddenly not providing comfort. That's frustrating and scary because if right. you're exactly. getting comfort, where are you going to go? 
Yes. And are you now facing a life without that level of comfort wherever you might find it? Because now yeah. if you're not getting it from where you used to get it, you have a quest ahead of you to try to find. And I think a lot of people do this where they find new hobbies and things like this. Yeah. You know? But I mean, that's if, if, if you're not motivated to suddenly find a new hobby, you know, and just because you're curious about new hobbies, I, I, I would say that's a terrifying. Um, yeah. 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 Right. No, I'm totally with you. So, I guess where, how do you, like, what is the symptoms of the problem, if that makes sense? Yeah. Well, here's what, here's what my first, um, my first indication was. So it'd be a normal setup for what I would normally enjoy for a game night. So Mm -hmm. wife's out teaching yoga, kids are in bed early or upstairs reading before school night ends or whatever. I've got the whole big screen TV to myself. I've got nobody to entertain. I've got nobody to parent. And, uh, I'm going to be ready to play some nice Xbox. And there's all these awesome games out there. And I look at my Xbox and not even interested in loading the game at all. Zero interest. But that, this is what I want to distinguish with everybody. Is this, this is what's different to me. Is we've all been there. We've all been where, Ross, you're probably like, nah, I don't really feel like playing Mass Effect tonight. But then you do. And then you get totally immersed in the game. And then you're totally happy. Right? Right. Am I correct in that assumption? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so I'm not talking about that. We've all been, all MMO players have been like, if I kill another turtle, I'm going to kill myself. And so we <laughs> step away from the MMO and we go do something else. We play board games with our friends and we're totally happy. This is like 12 levels beyond that. So what I'm saying is I load Walking Dead. I load Assassin's Creed. I load Borderlands and I play for just 10 minutes and I suddenly am like, what am I doing? I'm not, fun. I'm not having fun. The game's awesome. Game totally awesome. My friends are awesome. They're still there. We're playing Borderlands, and I, 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 it's as if the the controller's burning in my hand. I'm like, hmm. I've got to turn this off. I'm so dissatisfied right now. Oh wow! So was there an event that no. started this, or nope. it's just like, nope? Do you feel like you want to move on now? Have you tried? Is this just video games? Maybe. No. Well, that's the thing, right? So we've all again, we've we've all been there where I'm like, eh, I just must not be into Xboxing. Like I've had that event in my life. So I'm like, okay, I'll play my MMO. Brand new expansion expansion is out. Raises the level cap. Anybody in an MMO who's at level cap has been waiting for this. I, I get the expansion. I buy the expansion. Everybody's psyched. I start to play the, the new books, the new Lord of the Ring books. It's an awesome story. You're, you're playing Frodo. What I'm saying is they made a great expansion. Yawn. Yeah. Every, every time I log in, I'm like 15 minutes in, and I'm like, I got to shut this off. i like, why am I wasting my time? Like, this is killing me. And I kind of feel like, a, like maybe what a heroin addict may feel. Like I've never done heroin. I don't know. I don't, I've never done any hard drugs. I don't really know what that feels. But I've read, you know, you know, Rocker's book, like Slash's books. And he talks about his heroin addiction. And what little I know about heroin addiction is like, like Craig, you know, probably know this being a teacher. You know, isn't it that like after a while, your regular amount of heroin just doesn't work at all? It just yeah. doesn't work. And that's what they call chasing the dragon and... Yeah, and so so here I am sitting down, waiting for my heroin bliss to kick in, playing Lacho or Assassin's Creed. Pfft, nothing, zero, zilch, complete emptiness, void. I'm mm. like, what the frick? Okay, okay, okay. So it's yeah, video it's games. So maybe it's just so maybe it's PC games and maybe it's just video games. What about miniature right. gaming and stuff? Right, maybe it's just video games. Right. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some modeling. I'm going to break out the Flames War. I'm going to build some, the new awesome freaking GW chaos models that are in. And again, we've all faced that thing where the, the painting table's facing us down and it's so hard to get started and your paints are dried. And so again, Craig, I push through. Like, I, I don't want to even start. I'm like, nope, not interested. But I'm like, no, nah, I've been here before. I push through. I get the paints all lubricated up. I bust the models out. I get the files. I clean. I, I'm there. I sit down. Again, yeah. same feeling. Complete emptiness. Void. Actually, I get kind of pissed. Yeah, well... well <laughs> so what do you think at this so, point? To be honest, the pissed thing I totally get because... You do? Okay. Harken back to when I was working for Games Workshop, right? Uh, I was working for Games Workshop. I was uh, working about an hour and a half away from where I live, so or lived at the time. So I was living with my grandmother a couple nights a week, which was very nice. I, I love my grandmother. She has a really nice apartment right on a beach. It was great. Uh, I was working full time at their biggest flagship store in the Northeast. I really enjoyed my work. Uh, and then it took a turn when they offered me a chance at a regional directorship is what the British 
term for it. And all of a sudden it was real and it was serious and I was doing these I remember that phase. And, right. and I all of a sudden, like you turned a switch, was getting absolutely nothing positive from my gaming. All the gaming I was doing was at the store. It was all either when I was working for the store or preparing for my presentations. And I was getting absolutely none of my the recharge to my batteries that you're talking about. I was getting none of that from gaming. And it yep, just yep. it was an entire summer of that. And it just ground me down day after day, week after week. And it got to the point where quite often, I don't know what this says about me and probably more information than anybody wants to know. But as I'm falling asleep, I will kind of review fluff in my head or like remember gaming stuff, one thing or another. And that's kind of like how I relax as I'm as I'm sort of fading off to sleep. Um, I couldn't do that. There was none of that. Every bit of, of gaming I tried to remember or bring up would just remind me of all this other stuff I needed to get done. And so I totally get that there, there, as soon as it ceased being this central part of my life that, that gave me all these positive elements, it became a huge bane in my existence. And that that not a bane, but it was a, it was a, it was a, a gulf. It was an emptiness that I, I wasn't getting any of that positive reinforcement from gaming. And I started to get angry and frustrated. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Well, that's really interesting. That's the resultant emotions. Well, that's, yeah. and that's interesting. There's a subtle difference here, though, I think, because like when I ran um, Dak and Dak of the store, yeah. um, of course, because it sounds like it's just what happened to you, Craig, when you – when it becomes work, when your when your hobby is also your work, yeah. Uh, the problem there becomes that when you need a break from your work, um, what do you do? Do you do more of your hobby? Because I guess if you're really, really, really passionate about your hobby, that works. And for a long time, it didn't really bother me too much, but it started to be the point where, you know, yeah, I'm I'm painting up models for the store because a new army is coming out. And you want to display them, so I'm doing that. And so then, when you're painting, a lot of the times things you're not necessarily super want to paint. Then when you want to get something you do want to paint, it's just like more painting. So. I started turning to other hobbies then, like video games and something else that was a, an escape from what my work was. So I can totally relate to exactly what you're saying, Craig, of when it becomes your job, uh, it's no longer your hobby. And so it, it sort of changes the way you mentally look at it, I think, yeah. in a way. Um, but what's interesting about Rafe here is this isn't, I mean, it, it's happening to you when you, when I would say it's less of your job because, yes. you know, I would say in 2011, right, you were still doing the D6G and so arguably it's sort of having some pressures of getting things done and playing a certain game before the show reviews it. And I can see mm-hmm. that, but you know, at the end of last year, you, oh, you that was all gone. You, you saw it coming and step back. So you made it less of a, of a commitment Correct. and more of just a pure hobby time thing. And what I, I'm hearing now is I've had this happen before when I'm really, really busy with life and work. Like if I get extremely busy, I start to get really particular about what I do in my downtime. Oh. I start to think to myself, I better, I, you know, like if I've worked for a week straight, sometimes when we do releases, like, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm like, I have a lot of time. It seems like I have a lot of free time, but in IT, sometimes we have a huge release schedule and I'll be up to like three in the morning, three nights in a row. And then I'll be work the next day at eight in the morning. And just, it's just some, some weeks you have those. So you have a few of those going on, you know, for whatever reason. And all of a sudden you're like, I am only going to have two hours free this week. And you know, my kids need my week time on the weekend. I've got exactly two hours this week to myself. What am I going to do with it? And you start to play and you start getting very demanding of this, whatever this game's doing Ross, for me right that now. Must be it. You're like, this better be the best. Oh, it's just not that perfect. Why does just one bug? Oh, I hate this game now. I I, I waste them half a tower, my only two hours a week on this. That's how I feel. That's exactly you know? how I've been feeling. And so I think huh. what's happening is you might be so busy with all your, you know, you're running your own business again, not going on there. Um, maybe you're you've got to find the truly you gotta find things that are not good but great or or you just gotta look at it and say really I, am i in the mood to play a game it might be crappy but just to see what it's like you know you know that's, well that's, I mean, that's funny it. you should say that so that's what was freaking me out was what with what russ you just figured out is i'm like wait a minute well like when i'm not having fun playing my xbox i'm like i'm not doing the d6 generation i'm not blogging about it i'm not doing my solo podcast about it like what the like i'm not treating it as my job and one of the reasons why I stepped back away from the D6 generations and one of the reasons why I stepped back away from playing Latro was I had that moment that everybody has an MMO like a year ago where I'm making fake pies. And as you guys may know, but the audience may know, I've been really trying to launch my companion product to bankruptcy, which is Rocket Dog Reports, mm-hmm. and to really bring it national. And I had, and so Russ, I think you're onto something here. So, so, 
So when I'm playing Latro from 8 to 11, I'm like, really, Rafe? Like, if you read any entrepreneur, does he play a game from 8 to 11? Or is that when he's getting his work blog up to speed? Is that when he's returning those emails? He could, you know, blah, 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 all these things. So I have started to work during my normal gaming times. I've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot, and it's been, and it's been proving success. Rocket Dog is getting national attention. I'm starting to have uh, conference calls with all sorts of national vendors. It's getting a lot of national exposure. And, um, but that's what's weird, Craig, is that I'm like, wow, I worked really hard. Like today, I woke up really early. I worked really hard. I, got, I accomplished my to-do list. I came home. I fooled with the kids. I worked on the computer for two hours on Rocket Dog or caught up on the law firm, whatever, like suffered. It's now 9.30 everybody's in bed. I can have the big screen TV to myself, Russ. And that's what it was. I'm like, I really felt like I really earned my game time. Right. So I think you nailed it. It's because I've become super busy is your theory. It could be also, I I think I also noticed is that um, the kind of downtime entertainment I enjoy depends on the kind of work I'm doing. So if I'm in a place in my job where it's very, very mentally demanding, Like for whatever reason, like we're launching a new product or redesigning something and there's a lot of architecture work going on and I'm constantly problem solving all day long. When I, when I get home from work, my brain is burnt out. If your brain is burnt out, I find that I don't like to do like a video game, which is mostly problem solving, which is why they're so good because you're constantly exercising your brain all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't feel like trying to solve this really complicated Mass Effect puzzle right now. So I'll either play a really dumb game, like a game that's like, like Peggle, (laughs) right? Mm-hmm. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> or I'll paint because what I like about painting is unless you're converting or doing something complicated um, painting is is once you get the color scheme down it's, it's sort of mentally relaxing for me at least for me it's very cathartic and it's sort of like you can kind of switch your brain off almost and just kind of like let your hands do the work um, and I love that and this ran, I ran into this exact problem um, very recently where I got a couple different angles on this first of all I started um, I've recently been painting a lot of models just to paint them because we either we get review copies of them or hey can you paint this demo setup or whatever and I'm having fun painting them but it's also starting to feel like work it's like these models aren't calling to me you know I'm just doing them to get them done and then when I got the infinity models it's like these I really want to paint like I just they were calling to me they, whatever reason I really wanted to paint them so they really got me going again and then I was trying to assemble my big tag this big giant robot it's got like 30 parts it's huge and I realized I had a game on Tuesday. I only had a half a day on Saturday to work on it. And I wanted to get it assembled, primed, and painted, at least dry brush, which is a really very aggressive schedule for a half mm-hmm. day with you know kids running around and everything else. And I tried to assemble it. And I was rushing it. And I realized I was rushing it. I, wasn't, I was thinking, I'm not going to try to pin it. I'm just going to glue it together. And I kept falling apart. I was getting really mad and frustrated. I wasn't having fun. And I'm like, why am I putting this pressure on myself? I just stop take a break, go play with the kids or whatever. And if it doesn't get done by Tuesday, it doesn't get done by Tuesday. Just, just get it done when you can. Yeah. And then that Sunday I sat down and said, I'm going to try to do is pin them and I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do them as, and I was, it was so much more satisfying to just get them pinned, but to get them pinned exactly the way I wanted to. And, and mm-hmm. I just, it was much more relaxing for me. So I think that was part of my problem too. I was putting too much pressure on myself. Well, this might phase into what Craig's also with the modeling painting part. Yeah. Um, this is making a lot of sense. I'm actually feeling a lot better already. Uh, that's the next phase that I hit was I'm like, like, help me figure this out. So normally, if, if painting doesn't do it for me or modeling doesn't do it for me, that's what I love about the miniature hobbies. To me, it's three phases that have fed three parts of me. There's the reading and collecting part. And so if the other two phases aren't working, you can read and collect. Then there's the building and modeling part, like building model battleships, but you're building your miniatures. And then there's the playing with your friends. So I'm like, okay, these things at home aren't working. I'll go play with my friends. And then for a whole variety of reasons... And I think Craig's known this feeling in the past. Like, I'll, I'll be sitting here kind of bid, building or fiddling, fiddling with some of those Malifaux models, which we know some of them are fiddly. Um, so that could be running into what you're talking about, Russ, where the actual model itself was fiddly and that's just not working right. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, ah, I, I like Malifaux, but that's not my game. So I'm kind of building these models and I'm like, ah, I don't even feel like playing Malifaux this Tuesday. And everybody's kind of playing a, a kind of into a miniature game right now that for a variety of reasons I'm not into. Infinity's big right now. Craig's dystopian uh, or that new dystopian wars kind of people are kind of checking that out. A lot of Malifaux players. So I'm like, eh, why am I going to build my Flames of War tank? Who cares? Yeah. So, well, that's part of it. I mean, um, you have to feel like it's going to get played too, right? So that's another thing. If the game you're, um, 
if you game you're working on is not going to get a lot of play, then that's that's a little disappointing unless you're doing it for yourself. And part of the thing is you have to do it for your own satisfaction. I think model painting this is something I really hit me too with it with the Infinity stuff was I was rushing it to get it done so I get the bonus points for painting in the campaign. And then I realized, no, I want I want to do this right. I want to do these right for me. And if I get them done, great. If I don't get them done, that's fine too. But I really want to have these in my collection and make them nice. And mm-hmm. so I kind of pull back and say, I just want to do this to do them. And, and I want to paint them because the act of painting is fun, you know, in and of itself. And I sort yeah. of just mentally got, got myself back there. And then I felt that, again, that, that cathartic release of I'm just making art for art's sake. I'm not worrying about doing anything else with this. And that made it fun again for me. Well, I have to I have to try that because I definitely think I'm in the painting phase now, where I'm trying to make each piece the Sistine Chapel. Uh, right. You know, because well, I've, I've I've achieved that level before, mm-hmm. and I think I'm a little off my game actually, skill set wise, because I haven't been doing it right. 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 So I think I sit down and I and I think I'm at my peak, and then the model comes out sort of eh, and I'm like, Gah! yeah, you know. Right. Um, so well, maybe I just gotta loosen I- up. At this point in my life, I get a lot more satisfaction out of painting um, fast, and so it looks good as like the kind of mentality you have to go into when you're painting IG. You know, like right. you're gonna be painting a lot of models. So what you want is them to look cool on the table. Only mm. now I'm doing it in whatever I'm painting. So I tried um, Eric John's painting with with the white primer and uh and i didn't like it i wasn't having any luck with it i was using his brush i was using his <laughs> one shade one color shading technique and i was just having no luck so with my latest infinity models there's I'm six infinity models with about 10 more upstairs right now in a little box from the war store nice uh you uh, can't go wrong with a werewolf wearing a kilt anyway you cannot <laughs> and a laser gun a wise werewolf man and kilt with a laser gun right uh and I, and I have one upstairs, um, is I did my, and I primed him black. I, I dry brushed him bleached bone or whatever b- 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 ivory color I can find now that there's no such thing as bleached bone. And then I kind of compensated a little bit and dry brushed them again with a white. So they are mm-hmm. coming out with, they, they're coming, I'm coming at them with a much brighter original color when I start to paint my actual color palette on there. But uh, I just, you know, I mean, and it, and, and it all came back to me like, oh, this is so much more fun because it paints itself. Right. So, I mean, it's mm-hmm. like there are way, you know, if you found techniques and things that you enjoyed in the past, then I would, I, I would Go recommend, this is what I say when I'm in a place like where you are, like whether or not my GW experience was a parallel to where you are. I mean, I've been like, I'm gaming, I'm writing, I'm doing all this stuff and it's burnt. It is burning me out. And I'm like, I, I have times where I'm like, oh, but I, I, I want to just watch TV, but I can't watch TV. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to, I got to do the campaign that nobody's paying me for, but my friends want to play and I want to play. I want to get this stuff for dust. I want to get that stuff for, uh, for infinity. I want to do this stuff so I can give the Spartan game a chance. And, uh, and it just, it, it eventually you're getting pulled into so many different directions that I just stopped doing stuff for a little while. And, uh, and, and, and I just, I, to the point where it is, I am still trying to read the latest Horace Heresy book. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Cause I just don't mm. want to, I did it's, I haven't like, I'm <laughs> loving listening to, uh, the first law series. Oh yeah. Uh, but I'm not enjoying reading this stupid blood angels book. And, <laughs> and that's another frustrating thing. Cause I love reading. So what am I doing? Yeah. Well, I'm reading, you know, the, the, the mostly good, mostly translated fluff in the infinity rule books. Um, so I, I would say there's also, there's a part th- something inside you, Rafe has got to be calling you in a certain direction. Yeah. And if you get to a quiet place in your own head, I think you'll kind of feel it. Well, I did. I'll save that for the end. I think I'm on the road to recovery. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about this cause it does. I think this affects some other people with, with nostalgia and this will both loop in Craig and Russ cause they were here for this. I think I also got hear both in in what happened with Daka Daka years and which is nostalgia and then what happened recently. So I've noticed too that I feel really kind of old and curmudgingly and I, I don't want to loop Craig into this because like I, I have a feeling Craig knows what I mean but only because he can kind of get me. Uh, what I'm about to say doesn't mean Craig feels the same way. Um, which is, so, I, I, so we have our gaming store and it was getting a little crowded and so Rafe says... I want to make my elite London gamers club that I always want to that I always want to make, and I rally all these the troops together, and I kind of ram it down some people's throats, and they're like, eh, I don't really want to like this. And Russ is like, 
Rafe, I love you, but that's not my cup of tea. So I lose Russ as a gamer, but I get all these like space and, and we get all the space we need. And then it just sort of falls apart, just goes like a big wet souffle. And then, and so, but I, I, I don't even notice. I'm like, whatever, man. I, I don't care. Like I really wasn't invested in it emotionally, but I didn't realize the boomerang effect. So then, so then gamers get fragmented and they're going to two different places. And then we've got gamers going on two different nights, like Ryan and Russ game on Thursday nights now. And, and then we've got gamers going away to warehouses to play uh, AD&D, which, which is an interesting story. And then we've got some gamers going double midnight. We've got some gamers going to Miri and the whole thing just gets so totally fragmented. And I'm like, well, this isn't good. And then, then, then everybody kind of rebonds back together. And I'm like, this is, this is going to be great. And this is right when my gamer burnout comes. And then so I kind of show up and everybody's playing the game that I, I suddenly feel outside of the loop. I have no idea what's going on. Hmm. I have, this is when everybody rebonds back together. I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what people are playing. I'm not playing what people are playing. There's games that are getting started um, on the... On, you know, with, it, with, with not me involved. And it's me. People are inviting me. I show up. They're like, hey, Rafe, you want to sit down? I'm like, mm, no. You want to do that? You want to play Infinity? No. You want to play Malfo? No. And it, so it's not them. It's me. And I know it's me, but I can't get out of my own way. And I suddenly feel really sorry for myself. This is the part I'm kind of scared and nervous to talk about because it's kind of embarrassing because it's kind of selfish. I, I suddenly am like, hey, how did I get to be the guy on the outside looking in? Like I felt like some of those Christmas movies or something where they're all having the turkey dinner inside and I'm the homeless person like looking in, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And um, I'm like, how did that happen? And I'm like, oh, I know how it happens. It's the freaking Ian and he split the thing up and then he went over here and the freaking message boards. I'm like, I'm too freaking busy. I can't pay attention to all those freaking flying messages about 16 things about this kickstarter and 22 things about that kickstarter and somewhere well, nestled in there russ is like i shouldn't say russ because he's not the offender of that so but somebody's like hey let's play gladiator and next thing i know that game's going on but i have no idea because i'm not paying attention to all those freaking threads so i don't have time to pay for those freaking threads and then and then again i look back and i'm like dude like they have a right to post what they want to post on their threads like why are you why are you so mad about a forum and an email group and a message board? Like, you gotta chill out, dude. Like, they're living their life, you know? Yeah, I, and I'm like, I just want it to be like it was back in the freaking daca daca days, damn it. It was like Russ ran the freaking thing and his brother ran it and Nicole was there and that means that Russ and John could play and Craig would freaking create this awesome gladiatorial combat thing with Dave and we all were freaking involved and we all built dreadnoughts and we had freaking gladiatorial comment and there's 20 of us and there were leagues and we would order pizza and everybody ate pizza together and it was glorious <laughs> i'm like why can't it be like that i don't want to have to have these stupid forums and i got to pay attention to what's going on dang it and uh i just kept trying to like force it into that and it just it's not that anymore it's moved on can't go home again and i the part that was frustrating me is i know that all along my brain's like dude you gotta like things change and they're changing around you. And you're like, you're that old guy stuck in the mud back here. You got to get out of it. And I, I couldn't get out of my own way. I just got madder and madder and madder. I'm like, forget all this. Forget it. So I don't know if you guys have well, ever no, been I, there. I hear, I hear what you're saying exactly. And um, I think I hear a couple different things, Rafe, and I want to try to chime in on it because I think what you're saying is very important things. And I think they actually happen to a lot of gamers. Um, one of them is you, you mentioned that you know you're coming into a room and it looks like everybody's in predefined clicks or whatever and things are going on and you feel like an outsider, even though they're saying, hey, come play with us or whatever. And I think there's a perception that, and there's this email list, and I think there's a perception that there's a huge amount of organization going on yes. and all these things are pre-planned, but in actuality... There isn't a lot of or- there isn't as much organization as it looks like is going on right now. I mean, not even close. people just throw things out there. They say stuff, and then at the last minute, someone can't make it. Someone else does it, and what ends up happening is people just stand around, and it's like, like this Tuesday, I walked in there. I don't know who's going to be there. And like when I walked in, Ryan's like, hey, "I'm going to be there." Okay, fine. So Ryan and I played X Wing. That was not pre-planned at all. Then I was I'm supposed to play a game of Infinity with John. That's the only thing I pre-planned, and John got pushed out, pushed out, pushed out. Will couldn't even make it at the end, so he didn't have the terrain. So Brian grabbed the terrain from Will. Meanwhile. 
no one else, there's only one train going on. So I'm like, I'll play something else. So I just grabbed a six player game of Space Cadets. Anyone want to play Space Cadets? We started with four people just standing around. And then Josh and his girlfriend walked in. He want to play. So we, we grew up to six, just got to add people in the middle of the game, just off the cuff. And then I play the Infinity with John, and I was, it was totally random. I think mm. a lot of that, I think really, I think really what, what ends up happening is, is it looks like there's a lot of pre planning, but really it's people coming in and saying, what's going on? I mean, there is a small subset of people who are like, all talking to Will about Infinity because he's been asking if want to come in and put him on this little little mailing list. But otherwise, it's really very, and there's that. There's all kinds of mini groups about different games. Just like you and, and Matt sometimes come in and have your, your Flames of War game set up or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's that going on. But I don't, it's very, it's really, um, I think the thing to do is when you come in and I, is just not be afraid to just jump in and sit down. And, and, and I think the other thing is, is how comfortable you are. I think one of the things, Rafe, I know you've talked about this before and I think it's a fair concern is, some people are much more comfortable about jumping in and learning a new game than other people are, right? Like, oh, I don't feel like learning a new game tonight, right? So if, right. like, six people are in lear- playing the newest, whatever the newest thing is, Space Cadets or Gladiator or whatever they're playing, then, yeah, it might be intimidating. i got to learn a new rule game tonight, and these guys all know what they're doing. Um, but don't be afraid to try something new like that. I, but I, I really think the other thing, too, you mentioned was the nostalgia. Um, and, again, I think this might be factored into how busy you are because, really, there was a lot of, I mean, the forums that are DakaDaka.com today started because we created forums so everybody could talk about where they were going to game at DakaDaka, the, you know, DakaDaka, well, when it was a club and then when it was a store. And there was lots mm-hmm. of, there was lots of dialogue on the website all the time, just as there is in this email list now about all that stuff and planning and everything else. And who's going to be there when? And um, the only advantage you had was that you knew that three of us always worked there. But, but basically, you know, that still was there. And I think what's happened to you now is you're so busy, it's hard for you, and, and rightly so. You're trying to build your own company. You got a lot going on. Um, it's hard for you to keep up on these mailing lists. And all I'm saying is that, and I know it must be very frustrating and sucks because you know there's all this extra communication that you're not going able to have fun with and stuff. And the reason a lot of people, a lot of us email ourselves all the time is because one of the coolest things about miniature games and gaming in general is you can play, quote unquote, with your friends when you're not together. You know, because I can work on painting my model and then send an image out and say, look what I did to my, you know, I got my tag assembled, guys. It took me half the day Sunday, but look, it's, it's built. And, you know, Tim Colon will paint, here are some pictures, things I painted. And, and then, you know, Craig will write up a battle report and Will will write up the next mission we're going to play. And, and, and so we're all still, you know, sharing our hobby while we're not together. Um, and that was the whole, I mean, that's why all these websites exist really, right? And that's all that is. And what maybe is happening subconsciously is you're like, I don't even have time to do that. And it's frustrating you, right? Yes. Yep. Um, and that sucks. Well, and then it felt you know? burdensome for, for right. reasons I can't explain. Well, you feel compelled or committed or... Yes, or, or or it's it's a you're obliged to jump in. Yes, you know right. you, you don't you know you aren't. I mean, no one's sitting around going, "Well, Rafe hasn't commented on a, in a thread in a week, so uh, we, let's right. just not mm-hmm. talk to him for a month." But but you maybe you feel that way. It's, I'm sure it's it feels that way. But it just feels like you're being left out, right? But you're not. It's just, but it's your own isolation because you can't. You don't have the time to get on. So that's tough. Right. Um, but I don't think it. You know, when we, I think I speak for a, a lot of gamers that when you see somebody you haven't seen in a while. It's not like no one's sitting there thinking, oh, I haven't seen Joel in six months, that bastard. It's, oh, God, Joel, I'm so glad you're here tonight. Let's play a game together, man. I haven't seen you in six months. And you get to know each other over game and again instead of feeling intimidated by the fact you haven't seen me in six months. Hey, listen, I'll play a game together. And, and, that and was the, that was the irony is that that's what I mean when it was like me. It's like yeah. my friends weren't like, hey, dude, not for nothing, but uh, there's no space for you. Right. It, was like, it was like you just said. They're like, oh, yeah, no, come on in. Right. And I'd be like, nah, forget it. But I think, Russ, you tapped into that. Um, I would then sit down to the new game, let's say Merchants of Venus or something, and then I'm like, ooh, is this the best maximization of my two-hour Wayne Brink? Well, again, back to the video game, you're exactly. Yes. Because you're so busy, you're like, this is my... Now, um, one thing, too, you might want to think about is, I, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of things going off nights, right? There's some things on Saturdays, some things on weekends, and, and I, I get... That, to me, is tough because a lot of the guys on the list are, of course, much younger than we are, and they don't have kids, blah, blah, blah. And so they can go out and game on weekends. And like I was so jealous this past weekend, there were two X-Wing events. I know, I wanted you could, to do you them. you could win the early release of the Millennium the Falcon, Millennium Falcon and, and Slave, Slave 1. 1. Right, and one of the events no one went to, you just went there and showed up, paid your entry fee, and you got the Millennium Falcon pretty much. Yeah. Pretty and much. I'm like, ah, oh, and I, I could, you know, just not in that place in my life anymore where I could do that kind of stuff. It's just not an option for me. But but what I try to do, and this is comes back to the religious thing about Tuesdays or Thursdays or whatever day, gate day you pick is, because I game almost always once a week, I at least have the outlet all the time. And I think that's the key. The only way I figured out to still have the outlet at this, the way our lives are structured now. 
I, I, I cannot bounce around. I can, I cannot, you know, you know, when we talked to you, you mentioned the shift to Thursdays and back to Tuesdays. It took me like three months to shift to Thursdays regularly and, and almost longer to shift back to Tuesdays because it's just a timing order thing happened because it's just so hard. Once the calendar's like it's planned out and my work calendar gets planned out and our release schedule and my, my wife's schedule and my kids' schedule, it's hard to shift it back. So for me to bounce around is really, really hard. And I think a lot of people at this time, so that's why so many of us show up. And, but I think the, the attitude, um, and this is where I think, Craig, I think you do a really good job with your Tuesday night thing because sometimes I am kind of like Rafe where I come in on a Tuesday and I'm like, I'm not going to dinner with you guys. I'm here to game and I'm going to game from four o'clock till 10 o'clock and I'm going to pass out. And, but then you get frustrated because, you know, I've been this before where it's like this game isn't as fun as it should be and I'm not maximizing my hour. And then I, I'm realizing, no, Tuesday nights isn't to get the most games in. It's to chillax and just be a guy or girl or whatever with your friends and game, but it doesn't matter what we play, right? It doesn't yep. really matter what we do. As long as we're all having fun, then this is the best maximization of time. It's basically me to spend time not doing my work and not doing my family and, and just taking a break from all that and being and pretending for four hours that I'm still a 15-year-old kid with very little responsibility, right? So that's, <laughs> that's sort of the way I look at it now. And so what would a 15-year-old kid do for those four hours? He wouldn't care what he was doing. He'd be like, I'm going to just go color in a mech warrior circle for three hours straight. You know, what the right, hell? Right. And so that's, I look at that and I'm like, you know what? That's fun. You know, if I spend two hours just looking at the new X-Wing and don't play any games, or if I spend an hour at dinner with Greg or whatever, that's part of the fun. And that's, that's what it should be. Yep. And so I know I've, I've gone the opposite way of you. I've almost got so focused on must maximize my game time that I've done it at the expense of enjoying the company who I'm gaming with. And I think that's something I have to work on is to try to, try to not be that guy, right? But I, but I definitely feel like, there, I definitely noticed that the quality of my gaming experience is directly impacted by the amount of not spare time I have and how much I'm trying to you nailed squeeze it. out of that stone of that hour of gaming time. Because you, you know, know how, you know how like when you're depressed and your friend's like, come on, come out to the party. And you're like, no, I'm not coming to the Halloween party. But then you go to the Halloween party, you're like, oh my God, that was the best medicine. Right. Like that's what was not happening. I would force myself to go to Tuesday night and it wasn't the best medicine, you know? But I think it's because what you just nailed that I was, without realizing it, I've been so busy in all my other areas of life. And even though I wasn't making pies and I sort of deserved it on any list, on any wife's list or anything, and my wife's really good and always supports my gaming. But in my head, I'm like, I deserve my Tuesday night from 4th and then And then I think I was, without realizing it, trying to maximize the game time. And that was just frustrating the whole purpose of it. I realized that because of the answer, too, of how how I've worked around to the answer. Yeah, so you, you said you're on the recovery trail. So what did you, yeah. how did you get yourself back on the trail? What is your destination as you see it? Yeah. Well, what I decided was, um, I kind of said, that's it. I had, I, I'm like, I, I, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to game anymore. And I'm just, obviously I need a break. And that, when I said that, I freaked out for like four weeks and said, I can't have that result. And then after four weeks, and I still went to gaming, and then after four weeks of, of, of beating myself up about coming to my decision, I said, um, I'm like, Rafe, it's okay. Like, just, it's not meant to be right now. Like, don't worry about worrying about it. And, I, and something shifted inside of my body where it was like Monday, and I'm like, that's okay. I'm not going to go to gaming on Tuesday, and I'll just do something else, and it's okay. It doesn't mean that I've lost my leg, or, you know, gaming will come back, or maybe it won't, or who knows? And so I, I just suddenly freed myself up with the obligation that I had to game and I had to use this as my outlet and I freed myself up somehow with the obligation of um, worrying about it, that it would be gone. And I think what that did was, now with what Russ's observation is, literally that Tuesday, Ian calls me and he's like, hey, Rafe, um, somebody bailed out and we've got, uh, in the warehouse, we've got an AD&D second game going on, and, and we'd like to invite you to come play. And I was like, uh... I said to myself, I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know, because I, I was just going to kind of take a break for a while. And then I realized that I wasn't stressed. And I was like, wait a minute, your friend's inviting you, you'll have other friends there, you'll meet new people, and so what? You're like, like, I haven't played AD&D, I haven't had an urge to play AD&D, but I'm like, hey, your friend included you. So... Like, go be a friend. So I went, and because I didn't have any expectations, what Russ just said, I was just a four-year-old hanging out for three hours, I had a freaking blast. Well, there you go. Because I had no pressure. I didn't feel like I wasted my time. 
I didn't have because I didn't have any other expectation. I wasn't going just 24 hours ago. Right. Right. And it was like a lot of fun. And the other thing I did was I turned off the automatic. I don't get the emails anymore to the variety of web threads that I cannot keep up with. And I maintain my membership in the, in the few threads that I can keep up with. And there seems to be certain threads that are very frequented with a lot of activity. And I have done it you know, with Gmail where you just, they just go right in my inbox. I don't even see them. They're there if I want to see them, but, but I don't see them in my regular inbox. What's that mm-hmm. called? Archiving? No, labels. Well, there's a priority inbox and there's a regular inbox. You can, probably, you can promote them to important stuff and do all kinds of cool things. Yeah, they don't, yeah. They don't even get bolded. They go in as archived in this label, un, you know, mark as read. Right. So they're not bolded, nothing. And the, the few email threads that aren't as prolific, um, I'm involved in those. And that suddenly freed me up with all the stress. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Nice. <laughs> even, though, even though I might be. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> but I think that's smart. I mean, because there is, I mean, the thing about email is when you get email, you feel compelled to read it. And then you, you know, it, it just sitting there in your inbox, filling your inbox up. So no, I think that's smart. I think it's smart to take away the feeling of it's a job, right? Or it's, it's a pressure on you. You yep. don't want it to be a pressure. So that, I think it's yeah. smart. I think it's a smart way to tackle it, Rafe, and just try. You know, I, I, I had a similar time. Um, when when we finally sold DACA and um, we moved on, and our kids were still very young. Um, I was starting to feel like going on to it was sort of the same idea where I was going on Tuesdays, and I was feeling the stress of being away from my kids and leaving my you know Nicole. I've been away from her work all day, and Nicole's in with two you know young infants, and I'm just leaving her there, and I'm feeling guilty gaming, and I'm all the stress on myself, and I'm you know rationing to myself. But you deserve a little break, because but I'm thinking, but yeah, but I'm. But I'm less stressed out if I just stay at home and play a video game Tuesday night because I know I'm covering for the kids and it's just less stress. It's actually less stress to to do less gaming there in that mm-hmm. way. And so I pulled up. I think like after we, we when Dak ended, I was not reliably on uh, gaming on Tuesdays or any other day of the week for like almost a year, maybe maybe even two. Like that I was right. I know I know Craig remembers it too. I was very like in and out. I was just like very sporadic and not. And I was just what I needed to do then to kind of sort of decompress from DACA and. You know, also the fact that, you know, I have two young kids, there's a lot of work, you know. So um, that's so what I did. And, and then after a while, I got back into it. It came back, and I figured out how to balance it into the things I wanted to do. And, and I think that's, you know, just where you are now. You, you've started your own company, right? That's a huge, huge thing, you know, right? And, and you're a, a year in. You've already survived a year, which is a huge, you should be very proud of yourself, an accomplishment. That's an amazing accomplishment, starting your own business. I know you've done it once already, but it's not an easier the second time, right? right. And uh and, you know, most businesses fail the first year, so you're in now, but now you're in that second year, and there's a lot of pressure now. What do you, you know, success is almost harder than failure. You got all that going on. And it makes total sense to me that you need to reevaluate how you spend your downtime and ways you can make it not feel like a pressure but still be fun. And that makes sense to me. Yeah, and it sounds like such a simple mind switch. Um, and, and so for the video game answer, um, okay, everybody's in bed and blah, blah, blah. And I go, eh, you want to play some Assassin's Creed? I'm like, Nope, I really don't. I'm just going to watch American Pickers. Yeah. And I watch American Pickers. And then, like, that episode's over, and I'm like, hey, you want to play Assassin's Creed now? And I'm like, mm, nope. But for whatever reason, I don't seem to be beating myself up about it. Yeah, That's, don't worry about it. I don't know what shifted, but I guess a conscious shift is what shifted it. Yeah. yeah. yeah don't, don't, just do whatever. Do whatever I don't feel out of the break. woods yet, but I feel like on the road to recovery. That sounds good. Good. Any, yeah. Any parting words of advice, Craig? Uh, no, I would just say, well, uh, know what you get out of gaming, and if you know what you get out of gaming, then you'll know what's causing your stress when you're not getting it. Right. If that makes any sense to you. Because you don't no. want to be... Help explain that to me, because I knew what I got out of it, but I wasn't getting it. Well, if you like know... Like, it was calming me, like, but it doesn't calm me. I no, said I was getting it angry. It calms you. Know how, it, like, know how you use gaming, not so much maybe how you, what you get out of it. Oh, okay. You know, like... <laughs> like I use gaming to distract myself from <coughs> stuff that's going on that I don't enjoy. I use it to procrastinate almost everything. Um, and so when it when it can't distract me, then I know either there's something like so big that I really shouldn't be distracted, or I've got to kind of switch stuff up to to just like because like, as you said, it distract it, the gaming is either you're playing games or you're collecting or you're reading. So you're doing a bunch of different things, and uh, you should be able to like if 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 I'm blocked in one area, I'll kind of slide to another area and see if I can like if I can get what I need out of that. And when I've completely blocked, 
quite often what I'll do is I'll just I'll I'll kind of try to block out some time for myself and watch a movie, an old old movie that I know I love that'll be in the same genre. I'll watch some episodes of uh, of Firefly, or I'll watch you know my old VHS tapes, my wow. my pre, my pre heresy uh, Star Wars VHS tapes. Ooh, those are yeah. collectibles now, you know. Yeah, I know. Trust me. I think I threw mine out. I did too when I switched over to, to me too. TV, when I switched yeah. over, I'm like, what do I need these for? Nerds, yeah. Now really. the luddite. Now, gosh, I feel so stupid. <laughs> yeah, because trust me, those will help you out when you're, uh, you know, when you're feeling blue. Because when uh, when hand when hand shoots first, you go, yeah, yes! <laughs> how it should be, baby. That's right. <laughs> I think it's great advice, Craig. You definitely want to make sure you're getting it because you don't want to be the guy who's not getting any. <laughs> well, you <don't. laughs> That's you know, don't want to be that guy. Just saying. How much more time do we have before I, I uh, go wrap it up? Us out. We got to wrap it up, Rafe. So what else? Any other thing because the, the Dunkin' well, Donuts guy is giving us the know, I wondered if Craig had any advice on the being out of phase with the miniature game that everyone else seems to be playing, but you don't enjoy because uh, he's definitely been there before. Uh, what did I do? I uh, I bought, you just joined him. Bought an army and I joined in and I, I like because going right back to what we've been talking about. What do you get out of it? And I and what and what Ra- Russ said like. You know, I'm gonna game. No, oh crap! I'm not getting what I want out of it because I'm not going to eat when everybody else goes to eat, and I'm like in that 45 minutes or an hour of time, I'm squeezing two games in, but they're not really games that I really wanted to play. And so I think what I decided was what I want out of gaming is to be interacting with my friends. Mm-hmm. That's the first and foremost. And I want to be painting and I want to be reading. So I just got in a war machine and hordes, and I painted some stuff and I played with my friends and. And uh, was it like a huge fulfilling experience for me? No, but you go in, if you know, well, this isn't going to be like the good old 40K days. This isn't going to be Flames of War for me or whatever. You know, I'm doing this now to get in to, so I can hang out with my friends, so I can talk the same language they're talking, so I can paint some stuff up. And A, it actually frees you up because you're like, oh, I don't really care if it looks awesome. I was just thinking that actually. Yeah. Well, so, plus you don't collect you know, as much either. You just collect the bare minimum. So exactly. it's less stuff. You collect right. what you need so that you can put a decent looking force on the field and play with your friends. And what you're doing is you're getting back in sync with your friends on a level that doesn't aggravate you. But at the same because none of these games suck. Your friends aren't going to jump into a game that, that you're going to hate 99% yeah. of the time. They're not, it's not going to be like. Right. It's know, more like ah, a dislike. Everybody's playing balance your checkbook. Oh, crap. I got to learn, right. you know. It's more of a question of it maybe not be your best your your favorite your genre favorite. or it may be not you know not your ideal rule set. Well, excluding the great Agricola playing session that happened in two thousand and nine. Other than that, that was, that was for charity <laughs> though. That was for charity. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would I would say, like I mean, right now there's a bunch, but you, you know, Rafe, with our group, it's tough to say. Like that's <laughs> right. where I've been. I've been several times since then, going like, "Oh crap, I don't want to really. None of these are really calling to me." Okay, I'll I'll buy a bunch of models and paint them up. And oh, we, what you guys seriously, you guys are playing something different already. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, it's gotten like, really bad. That's a whole nother it, TLC. Yeah. Oh, it's gotten it's gotten atrocious. And like every time something really good, I would say right now, Infinity for me is where Dust is, and I still love Dust, and I'll mm-hmm. still play Dust any chance I get. Um, but it's like I'm exci- I'm as excited about Infinity probably as I am about Dust, and I'm kind of frustrated and aggravated already because I'm like, oh, you know, you just know it's gonna slide away. We're waiting. We're just stalling. There's already movements. Like, no, Craig's not painting yet. Wait till Craig gets finished painting, then yeah. shift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are the email threads he doesn't read. Quick. Yeah, hey, Frost, what's everybody <laughs> shifting to so I can be prepared? Yeah. Well, the, now if you could only know that, then you'd be all set. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, see, that doesn't really happen. But it'd be funny if it did. <laughs> what, no, the, that that email has gone around several times, but mostly as a joke because nobody knows what what the, what the next big thing would be. <laughs> right. But I mean, yeah, I, that what I would do is I would get into pick a game that you think everybody's getting into, get into it at, at the bare minimum level so that you can have fun, that you can be like, don't like, don't be like me, and be like, okay, I'll get into it. Bye. <laughs> Everything because I want to be able to do anything, even though I don't love the game. And then <laughs> really bent out of shape, you know. Like, uh, like I just remember you painting your beautiful hordes forces, and you're like, I, I, I just don't, I don't, I, I don't like the chunky. Ah, uh, forget it. He does like a hundred guys. I'm like, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. yeah, he did two armies for that. He did, he did war machine too. Two, yes, I did two armies <laughs> for that. Yeah, yep. still a great uh, game. Uh, yeah, so I would recommend you a pick only one army, and b pick, uh, you know. 
I would I would recommend you work with somebody like one of the, like if you're talking Infinity, I would say work with like Matt and Will put together a, a really solid but like you know coherent force, so you don't have to buy any extra models. And then I would put that together, paint it up because the the most of these models are cool to paint, whatever game system you're talking about. And and then you have you know you, you learn the bare minimum. Most of these games have their rules online, or you can borrow a rule book, so you don't have to pay all the money for that. You know, the fluff is all over the place, so you can get a little into the fluff. And then you're talking the same language for as long as they're playing that game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the next big game might be something that you love, or you might be pushing the agenda next time. So, yeah. All right. Good advice. Hey, speaking of the of still, language, the, the evil eye over there and the Dunkin' Donuts guy is getting pretty to hairy. Quote, to quote a great TV show, the wheel's always spinning, but it only matters to the people on the rim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. mm, there you go. All right. Well, on that note, All right, well, thanks for letting me ruminate, Rafe. Thanks for coming into Dunks and sharing. That was, I think, that was a really interesting. Hopefully, people got something out of that. Uh, I'm sure you're not the only person, as evidenced by all three of us going through similar phases, uh, yeah. to have to deal with this uh, scary, you know, scary dilemma of not yeah. you know, not getting what do you want out of your games. That's not good. Yeah, it's not good, especially when it's uh, in a big, important part of your life. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show helps it grow.